So here's something that even a 12 year old can easily accomplish and a great opportunity for it that is coming out very soon. It's gonna be legend, wait for it. And if you watched my previous video, I highlighted an upcoming NFT based virtual reality metaverse, so to speak, which is a game where anybody can log on to, to not only play, but also monetize through creating assets and games and selling things on the marketplace. And out of the many existing cryptocurrency and NFT projects out there, this game called The Sandbox is one that I believe will really stand the test of time and become much larger and much more mainstream, especially since many renowned franchises and celebrities have already gotten involved. Now before we get started, it would be great if you just do me a very quick favor by very gently smashing a like button for the YouTube algorithm and you can also consider subscribing for more cutting edge videos about making money online and digital entrepreneurship just like this one. Plus you can check out my investing channel for more insights as well. And with that, let's get started with the video. So before we get started with the tutorial itself, here is a brief again overview of the game in question called The Sandbox. And by the way, you can still check out my previous video in which I cover not only The Sandbox but other really promising metaverse or like virtual world related projects as well, including Decentraland, which is the other major uh, project in the space, I would argue, and also Engine Token. So be sure to check out my previous video for the more thorough explanation of those and how to invest and things like that and the different cryptocurrencies associated with these projects. Anyhow, uh, for today, we're going to be focusing on, again, the Sandbox project, which as you can see, or as you probably saw, uh, Snoop Dogg himself is one of its partners. He recently hosted an event a sort of exclusive event on the platform and um, by the way the platform itself is still sort of in its beta so you can't quite log in to play just yet but there are other ways to very much get involved by uh, creating stuff for the platform and for example selling things on the marketplace and much more as I'll get into but first let me look at some of their uh, partners we have The Walking Dead um, let's see we have Dread Mouse. I think that's how you pronounce it the DJ right Atari is a huge um, a pretty well-known game maker uh, Hell's Kitchen TV shows this Smurfs and things like that, right? And also like Snoop Dogg. Um, and if we just scroll down, um, this is sort of an overview of the game, but the main thing or the main promise of this game, and again, I fully believe that this will be uh, much larger in the future and is, uh, from what I can tell, a very sustainable project in terms of um, allowing uh, compatibility or having compatibility with other similar, for example, asset creators, NFT generators, or even like Minecraft uh, projects. So as you know, Minecraft is one of the most popular video games out there, right? Where people create these sort of block looking objects or block looking characters and buildings and things like that. And the cool thing about Sandbox though is that you're actually going to be able to create uh, or actually import your assets that you've created for Minecraft and other similar games into this project too. So the great thing about the Sandbox is that it has a lot of inter, um, I guess, compatibility with other similar projects, which makes it really cool because in the future, this will mean a lot of sort of collaboration opportunities and the fact that um, having these NFTs, right, these non-fungible fungible tokens being your property, these will actually hold a lot more value the more you can actually use them in not only the Sandbox, but some of these other, you know, marketplaces, games, etc. And just having more uses for them in general. And there are indeed going to be many ways to monetize a sandbox game, some of which are already live, including, uh, as you can see here, they have their own NFT marketplace where you can design and sell your own NFTs. And later on in this video, and soon, I'll show you how you can very easily generate uh, your own NFTs and list them for sale on the sandbox or even on you know, other websites like OpenSea if you want, right? So here, first of all, so the sandbox has their own NFT marketplace. And as you can see, a lot of these are sort of based on some of the current trends, right? So if I scroll through, um, you'll actually see some of the more popular ones or some of the top listings are like Halloween related, right? Because, well, obviously Halloween is coming up, right? So this is sort of an example of how people have been capitalizing on the latest trends. And um, these NFTs, by the way, are also very easy to create. And secondly, there's also land on the sandbox, so you can potentially also own your own land, but it'll obviously be, be a lot more expensive. But if you do have that extra, you know, bit of money to sort of play around with or spare, uh, you could consider, you know, investing in a bit of land, a plot of land on uh, on sandbox where you can actually build up your own games and assets and even charge people and make money that way, right? But besides that, there are even other ways to make money with the sandbox. And for that, I'm going to go over to the create tab right here. 
and this is where they have three different free, completely free, uh, no coding required softwares. So these are extremely user friendly, which is yet another reason that I think the sandbox will succeed. It's how user friendly and accessible it actually is, right? So first of all, they have their own game maker. I'll come back to this in just a bit, but I want to first show you the Vox Edit uh, NFT creator. So first of all, what Vox graphics are or Vox models are, are these like block looking characters and assets and like, you know, pieces of architecture and even environments and things like that. Uh, and the cool thing about Vox models is uh, just by using their free software, you can not only design for sandbox for use, you know, objects for use in the sandbox, uh, but you can also use them in other games that use um, Vox models as well, right? So there's that again inner compatibility as well. So that's very cool. Um, and this is sort of the e ecosystem that they're building out, right? And um, so you can actually use this. And in terms of making money, again, you can design your own NFTs, list them onto the sandbox or other marketplace for sale, and I'll show you how to do so. And um, you can also animate your NFTs. Um, you can also sell them, or you can actually incorporate them excuse me, in an NFT game for use in that game to monetize, right? Plus, you can also make your own game and then put your own NFTs in them and things like that, right? And besides that, there's also going to be a uh, million, two million, excuse me, creator fund where they're actually looking for um, sort of, you know, the top NFT artists or Vox uh, graphic artists um, where they're actually get uh, special priv privileges and um, I guess, you know, better uh, returns or better profits from each of their sales, right? So whereas traditionally, Sandbox might take a small cut from each sale, I think it's only 5% anyway, but if you become like an approved creator, um, you, can you can actually have various perks, including being able to earn 100% of the profits from each of your NFT sales, right? So there are in fact a lot of people um, that have been making money just by doing these types of things, right? And just by lowering the platform and doing it really well. Um, and by the way, this is not something that's, you know, get rich quick by any means, right? It's obviously a skill that you can learn, um, and, but it's I think one that has a lot of potential in the future, especially if you're sort of designed savvy right and really the softwares are quite easy to use as well so with that um, I'm gonna first well let me actually first show you the game maker before I jump into Fox edit so the game maker is just as the name implies right it's also another really easy to use or sort of drag and drop no coding required software that you can very easily learn and they also have their built-in tutorials for you to watch and I'll show you where you can find them but anyhow, this is where you can build up your own games for use in uh, the sandbox, where you can not only, if you create your own games, monetize your own games, or perhaps host them on your own land. And in the future, I'm pretty sure they're going to have ways to sort of allow people to sell their games as well, although I don't think that's sort of implemented just yet. But even if you don't, um, create anything on your own. In the future, when the game opens up to a public audience, there are going to be ways to play to earn, right? So one of the biggest appeals of NFT-based games has been playing to earn, like take Axie Infinity for example, right? It's been blowing up in popularity lately. The Sandbox will have something similar where you can actually just log in uh, to the game, play their games, um, and be able to monetize and earn, you know, free currency, cryptocurrency, NFT, and so on and so forth that you can also convert into real money if you so desire. So with that, um, I'm gonna go back over to the Vox Edit. Oh, by the way, the last editor is called the Avatar Editor. This is just for designing your own uh, avatars uh, for use in the game. And I believe these avatars you can also sell. You can also sell on these marketplaces. So these are just another type of um, NFT create uh, that you can create. So with that, let's now jump into the Vox Editor really quick, and I'll give you a brief tutorial. It'll be easy as one, two. All right, so without further ado, here is Vox Edit. As you can see, it is actually quite user-friendly. All I need to do is to go to the left side here, and by the way, you can actually check out the news on the first tab, but to start creating your own um, assets, you can go over to the modeler to start something from scratch. And then you can also do the animator to animate anything you've already created. So any model or Vox model you've already created. But in this case, and there's also the block editor, which is better used for creating like block type assets. But anyway, um, what we're gonna do now is go to the templates tab where we can actually see um, a bunch of these, well, templates that we can actually also tweak, right? So these are conveniently built uh, for us, well, at least these types of creatures and sort of people type models, and there's also like weapons too. Uh, but these are, these are the templates that they have. If you're going to be building out any sort of other type of, say, like 
um, asset like a building or an object um, you can actually use the modeler or the block creator and again if you want tutorials on the left side here you can just click on tutorials and they have these um, well tutorials for you to just check out and all of them are only like three to five minutes long so they're very very short and concise so you can definitely just use these to learn and there are tons of free tutorials you can check out uh, on youtube and online as well right but for now i'm going to show you an example which is going back to templates and i'm going to click on one of these uh templates right here such as let's see i'm going to do something sort of spooky so let's do the large spider link all right and after you select your template or create your new model you have to save it into a folder so i'm just going to save it in the um okay i need to rename it so I'll rename it spider all right because i already have another file called untitled so i'll just save it as fighter and uh just give it a few seconds here and here is my spider right um if i just right click so the way it works is left clicking allows you to select stuff um and as you can see on the left side here we have like different assets um, being highlighted if I hover over them, but right click actually allows you to move stuff around. So uh, if you scroll in with your scroll button, you can actually scroll. If you click on your middle mouse button, you can also move uh, up and down, right? So again, right click is for rotating and uh, they have their plane set up. So there's like the blue, red and green planes. So it's 3D. And here you can just click on the right side here um, for each component. So um, the far right is where you can check and change the um, some of the attributes of each of the components of your object, right? So for example, if I wanted to change up spider belly here, I can click on the pen icon and I can change up some of the colors. Um, and um, I can also add blocks to it. I'm just gonna undo that uh, by going over to, okay, Control Z doesn't seem to work every time. So you wanna go to edit instead on the top left and just click on undo if you messed up anything. And also to switch between different tools, you can just go over to the left side here where there's like a selection mode, um, this create mode, and then there's also a paint mode as well as erase mode. So the main thing that you'll use is create mode if you're gonna be you know, creating any of your own structures here. So I can highlight create mode and then under that, you'll see lots of sub tools pop out such as uh, if I click on the box tool here, you can actually use it to drag and drop um, like box structures like this. Right, and then um, they're like a, diff a given color, which you can change on the far right here. Right, um, and notice how it actually changes along with the rest of like some of these lines here. And I'll show you how to uh, address that later. Um, besides this, there's also a face tool on the left here, which I can use to elongate any face I have. So I can just add like additional like, length to my one of the sides here and stuff like that. I'm adding it to the wrong side. I'm adding it to the bottom. <laughs> But either way, uh, okay, I'm gonna actually go to undo. So typically, sometimes Control Z will work to undo, but for some reason it's a bit bugged out right now. So I'm just gonna go to the top here and just undo stuff right here. It's pretty easy to do anyway. And now to change some of the colors, you wanna actually head to the right side and notice how there's like palette, it says palette here. So this is where you create different like sub structures within your structure here. So um, my palette actually has different well, substructure. So, for example, if I change the color of the first item here, it only changes these lines, right? If I do the second one, it changes something else. The third one, it changes something else entirely, right? So, these are just examples. Now, Control Z actually works pretty cool. So, these are just some examples of um, how to create like a simple structure. And simple, uh, fortunately, rather, um, a lot of these templates have already been provided for us. So, all you really need to do is tweaking, right? If you're going to be doing like a character model or like creature modeling. Um, if you're going to be creating something simpler, let me go back first and not save. Uh, if you're going to do it, be doing something like um, like item modeling, it, it'll usually be a lot easier, right? Because you don't have to have that many sophisticated parts. Because the main thing about having all these parts, these like different, you know, the torso, the head, the legs, set be separate, is that it makes it much easier for um, the program to, to animate, right? For, or for you to design an animation for this, you know, for this thing. And in fact, it's already been animated. So that's another cool thing. If I go to the bottom, if I go through the timeline here and I can just click play, you can see that the spider has already been animated. So that's pretty freaking awesome, right? And to do so, you can actually just use the animate tool um, to edit this, which is if I go back, there would be like another tab for animating. Anyhow, uh, if you're just creating something simple, like designing a hat, sunglasses, accessories, a shield, sword, whatever, you usually can just make it very simple, right? It doesn't have to have multiple parts like these moving objects do. Um, you can just create one sort of asset 
and just use the block editor or the block creator to just add blocks to your, you know, whatever item it is. All right, and after you're satisfied with your creation, you can simply go over to file um, and export to either export your file as a specific file type, like a Vox file, again, to be compatible with other projects or just the sandbox itself. Or if you want, you can actually up, uh, upload or export directly to the sandbox marketplace by clicking on export to marketplace. And for this, you do have to have your own account. And here you can just, uh, so after clicking that, you can actually select the default animation you want to show on your listing on the marketplace. So I'm just going to select this one that looks pretty good or just select from a variety. I can actually go to attack 01. I think that looks cooler. I'm going to click on export and uh, this will actually allow me to list um, if it decides to load. It'll actually take a little bit because sometimes it's laggy. All right, here it is. So it actually goes back over to the browser. Uh, if I just Right here we are on the browser. So as you can see, um, I can select new asset. So it already got my spider. I can just type in, um, you know, the asset, the description, and all that stuff. Name it, and then um, I'll be able to mint my NFT on the Sandbox Marketplace for sale. And speaking of which, anything sold on the Sandbox Marketplace is for Sand Token, which is their own cryptocurrency, and it's actually mainstream uh, mainstream enough to be able to be bought and sold on various cryptocurrency exchanges. Which means, if you actually earn Sand Tokens or if you want to invest in it, uh, you can also convert it to other types of tokens like Bitcoin and even you know USD if you decide to sell your cryptocurrency, right? So there's definitely money that you can potentially make from this. And again, there are other opportunities as well besides using the um, Sandbox or a marketplace where you can not only sell on places like OpenSea, right? So if, because these are voxel um, art pieces that you're creating, they don't necessarily just uh, can be used for sandbox and can actually be used for other means as well, right? So if I just type in, for example, voxel on OpenSea, and by the way, if you want to learn how to create an account to buy and sell stuff on OpenSea and to have a MetaMask account to use for not only OpenSea, but other cryptocurrency NFT platforms as well, it's actually a very important uh, extension to have or app to have a metamask wallet anyhow um, i have a link for that a tutorial for that rather in the description box below but as you can see here there are a lot of voxel artwork that you can very well also create with the uh, vox editor or vox edit from sandbox right so it's really cool of them to provide this free editor uh, very easy to use editor for you to create not only assets for their game but you know for use in other platforms and just for sale as an nft in general as well right and uh, besides this you can also take to places like fiverr where you can not only sell like sandbox related assets but um, as you can see, you can provide these services for really create, you know, sandbox assets and games. Uh, but besides this, you can also do like voxel art, right? So if I just search up voxel, we'll definitely see like people profiting, right? They're, they're, people have made quite a bit of sales, as you can see here. Uh, voxel artwork, right? And just from this, um, and I believe because this is going to be a lot larger in the future, um, this is sort of an opportunity to get your foot in the door and start a, sort of something new and something that's less competitive on Fiverr to sort of get a foothold on the platform platform so that you have a higher ranking gig and thus get more sales. And with that, I actually saved the game designer tutorial for the future when it becomes more monetizable, but you can definitely still go onto the Sandbox website to download the free software to play around with. And they also have a bunch of templates uh, for you know pieces of land and games that you can also base off of. Anyhow, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for more cutting edge videos. And by the way, also you can check out my free YouTube guide, which has actually migrated to my website recently. And and um, it's right here. You can actually just go to influencerunchained.com and click on this link here or click on any of these blog posts below. I'm actually still adding new uh, posts to this. So if you're interested in turning your favorite hobbies and passions into a profitable YouTube side hustle and you can work whenever you want for however long you want, be sure to check out this free guide. And with that, thank you so much for, uh, so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.